Hi everyone, today I will extract precious metals from multi-layered ceramic capacitors. I will also be explaining some things about them, because I do happen to have some insider knowledge on the matter. This is not a tutorial, do not repeat anything shown in the video. MLCCs are some of the most used and produced electronic components. They come in many different shapes, sizes and capacitance values. They are made from many layers of ceramic interspersed with metal electrodes. The collective surface of those electrodes allows for storing more electric energy than ceramic disc capacitor of the same size. Their relatively smaller size makes them a better choice for compact circuitry than cheaper aluminum electrolyte capacitor. I could nerd on them for quite a while because how they're made is genuinely interesting, but I will refrain myself to information relevant for urban mining. As you can see on the sketch, an MLCC consists of the ceramic electrode stack and termination caps that connect the electrodes and allow for the component to be soldered to a board. What interests us as urban miners is the composition of the internal and termination pastes. Internal electrodes can be silver palladium or copper nickel. All MLCCs produced before late 90s have silver or silver palladium internal electrodes. Termination paste can also be silver palladium or just silver. Most common is copper nickel and paste containing tin, although those can also contain few percents of silver. Lastly, most MLCC terminations are also electroplated with thin layers of nickel and tin. Why am I telling you this? Because if you're using a strong neodymium magnet when you're separating magnetic nickel capacitors from silver palladium ones, the plating might still get them to stick to it and you'll be throwing them away. So, unless the capacitor is strongly magnetic, do not throw it away. To further demonstrate this, I simultaneously processed two samples of MLCCs. I weighed both samples and began to dissolve them in diluted nitric acid. I did not crush them although this is recommended, because I wish to show how different ceramics behave in nitric acid. Non-magnetic MLCCs are on the left and magnetic MLCCs are on the right. Because I am dissolving whole MLCCs, the acid first attacked tin and nickel plating, then it progressed to the termination paste, and finally to internal electrode. Here's a short time lapse. It didn't take long for a distinctive color of copper and nickel nitrates to show up. Unlike them, silver nitrate is colorless. Here are the capacitors after one day of leaching. Mag magnetic capacitors changed color, but are mostly intact. The solution is a very nice shade of blue. The dark material you see floating around is tin oxide and one bug. Unlike barium titanate based ceramic capacitor, zinc oxide ceramic-based capacitors start to, di to dissolve and break up. This is why I didn't crush them. You don't need to. Here you can also see bits of tin floating around. After two days of acid leaching, I filter the solutions. Here you can see 
that even barium titanate ceramic started to break down a bit, but nowhere near to the extent of zinc oxide ceramic, which completely disintegrated. This is both a good and a bad thing. Good because you don't need to grind or crush your capacitors, which is uh, energy intensive and kind of annoying to do. Bad because you'll use more acid. Another thing you should note is the reddish brown color of the solution you should remember from my palladium extraction videos. While silver nitrate is colorless, palladium nitrate does have a distinctive color. After I filtered the solutions, I added copper to them to cement precious metals. As you can see, both solutions are reacting with copper, but while the left solution is only cleaning the surface by dissolving the layer of copper oxides, the right solution is actually depositing silver and palladium. I had quite soon realized that a small piece of copper foil won't be enough. So, I added a large copper pipe. As you can see by the reaction, there was quite a lot of silver and palladium nitrates and excess nitric acid present in the solution. Even after the reaction had slowed down, I continued the cementation for the next two days to make sure I got all the metals. Now let's move to magnetic MLCCs. Cementation produced no silver, but just to be thorough, I tested the solution with a bit of hydrochloric acid to see if perchance there are some traces of silver. Adding acid did indeed produce a white precipitate, but is this really silver chloride or is it something else? To test it, I decanted the solution and added ammonia. Silver chloride dissolves in ammonia and uh, my mystery precipitate also dissolved. But it is only half of the test. Adding nitric acid to the solution of silver dissolved in ammonia should return it back to silver chloride precipitate. This did not happen and the precipitate was not silver chloride. I strongly suspect it was ceramic powder. Now let us return to actual silver. After I thoroughly cleaned the copper pipe and the rest of the copper bits I added to the solution, I filtered and thoroughly washed the precipitated silver and palladium mix. Here you can see a very nice amount of precious metals on the bottom of the beaker.
After filtering cemented silver and palladium, I dried and weighed it. I was positively surprised. From starting mass of 72 grams, I extracted 12 grams of precious metals. That is 16.7% of the starting mass, which is an excellent result. Made even better by the fact that the end product should contain somewhere between 2 and 5% palladium. Thank you for watching, like, share, subscribe and see you next week.